Galnet News, your galaxy in focus, 16th of January 3301. In today's news, the Imperial wedding preparations are underway. Ashling Javal objects to her grandfather's marriage. A special report on salvage law. Purple Netcom's Holdings Corporation declares independence from the Federation. The League of Nabataean Defense Party leader Carl Hagen demands a zero tax policy and the investigation into the death of Federal Vice President Nigel Smeaton emerges inconclusive. Our top story today concerns the royal wedding in the Empire. Foreign dignitaries are beginning to gather on Capitol in Ashina in preparation for the royal wedding. Senators from throughout Imperial space have begun arriving and many leaders from friendly independent systems too. Red carpets have been laid in local starports and for the full length of the Imperial Avenue Gilded open-top speeders can be seen ferrying them to their ornate quarters at the Imperial Palace. For the ceremony itself, special wheeled gilded carriages pulled by horses. The route is already being prepared with arrays of brightly coloured flower arrangements flanking the red carpets. Huge banners carrying the Imperial crest are being raised between the trees and on the faces of key buildings. Many have said it is this sort of thing that shows the grandeur of the Empire at its best. Some objections from Ashling Javal, however, who has lodged an objection to the marriage of her grandfather, the Emperor, to Florence Lavini. Coming out of the office for marriage with her lawyer, she read a prepared statement from a queue. She said, I have lodged a formal objection to my grandfather marrying his fancy woman not for love, not for marriage itself, but to change the succession without having to appear in the Senate. That's all I've got to say at this time. This unusual action will trigger a hearing of the Marriage Council in the next few days. They will review and make a decision on the validity of her objection. Experts we have spoken to believe it is unlikely to succeed. The royal wedding will bring the bride's daughter, Arissa Lavini, a step closer to inheriting the top job in the Empire as Empress Lavini, a position which is backed by Imperial Chancellor Anders Blaine. Although no concrete plans have been laid for the succession at this time, commentators are torn between the legitimacy of Ashling Javal, Arissa Lavini, and Senators Torval and Petraeus. Galnet wants your views on the succession, so send us an audio log telling us who you're backing and why, and make your voice heard. Salvage law has become a hot topic throughout civilized space recently, but could recent moves prompt a change to the way it works? Zach Hunnison finds out. Salvaging has long been regarded as an illicit activity throughout most of the major systems. Pilots searching through wreckage for usable parts and undamaged cargo would often find themselves pursued by system authority vessels for what they believe to be a service to the community at large. But that may soon be about to change. Discussions are now underway to petition for a galactic salvager's license. Such a license would then allow privateers to salvage with impunity and help to separate the salvager from the pirate. The feasibility of implementing such a license and the enforcement of it is still in question and representatives across the frontier have still yet to respond, but certainly the move will help to legitimise an action that serves as a necessary form of income for many pilots across the galaxy. Zach Honeyset, Galnet News. More independence news from the Federation now. In a shock move, the Purple Netcoms Holdings Corporation has declared itself as an independent and have called on commanders to help it withdraw the Sergovic system from the Federation. The CEO of the company angrily denounced the recent tax rises by President Halsey and claiming that her actions are a direct blow to the viability of the corporation and the well-being of its population. He said, these tax rises put people's jobs on the line and we are not going to let a president without any working knowledge of the economy ruin our lives or livelihood. Responding to the statement, a representative of Sergovic Labour condemned the declaration and affirmed their support for the president without explicitly supporting the tax rises. Further developments on the federal tax situation now. Carl Hagen, the leader of the League of Nabataean Defence Party, today called for a zero tax policy for citizens of the system of Nabataean at an impromptu rally. He said, We citizens of the Federation are treated poorly compared to the progressive policies evident within the Empire. The Federation is older and stronger, but our heritage is weighed down with the bondage of taxation. Let us learn from the strong leadership of Senator Petraeus and his Imperial colleagues 
and ensure that our own society is not a burden upon our families. A spokesperson for the workers of Nabataean refused to comment on what he described as the ravings of a madman. Ignoring the speech may be a mistake for the current ruling party as the opposition received a massive swing in support when the speech concluded. More on the investigation into the death of Federal Vice President Smeaton now. Despite the suspicious circumstances that have been widely reported, no further information has come to light. Social media is alleging a high-level cover-up and it seems large amounts of data has disappeared due to system failures. President Halsey is said to be devastated and gave a brief statement offering her sympathy to the family. It is understood there are a great many discussions going on behind the scenes to appoint a new vice president, which under federal law must be completed within 30 days of the vice president's loss. Alder Simons has given an emotional interview on the chat show Jenkinson. He said, It's big business behind his murder. Those evil people, the military-industrial complex of old, they've always been against my dear Nigel's government and its policies. Who else could launch such a big cover-up without attracting any attention? With no promising leads and much speculation continuing to surround the Vice President's death, conspiracy theories are rife, and the Federation will need to ensure no fingers are pointed at Smeaton's replacement when the decision has been made. And that's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.